Hi guys, and welcome to another video. Uh, I know we're here at the Eye of the North here, we will be continuing with the Char Homelands, but I have decided to come back here so that we can grab our bounty, our blessing for the Char Homelands, so we're going to speak to Gedril here, and say... Here? I can't remember what we're supposed to say, isn't she just supposed to give it to us straight away? Or is it because my title's not up? And it's because my title isn't up. So you see here, we've got this uh, title here. Um, the Covert Agent title. As we proceed through the Char Homelands, this will get higher. Helping us to basically kill Char better. Here we, you can see I've now got a buff on me. This is called the Rebel Yell. Um, and basically it just helps us kill Char. But something interesting about this, which is why I've gone to get it, is it actually triggers a conversation out in the Grothmar War Downs, believe it or not. Which is pretty... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Which is actually pretty cool. So uh, we'll do that before we continue on with the story. Um, and also the Rebel Yell, uh, I did just read on Wiki literally like two seconds ago I was reading about this stuff. Uh, apparently that's a reference to something that some Americans used to sh shout. I think it was in the Civil War or something. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, you see now that I've activated this, it's actually triggered all these people up here. Now this is a platoon there's going to be some quests way later on about. So do remember these guys. So Sergeant Westar. At attention, troops intelligent reports that Rake Blazeclaw, one of the Char leaders, has been sighted fleeing to the southeast and attempting to rally the Char forces there. This is our opportunity to strike. Removing Blaze Core from the equation presents us with one less formidable foe, while sowing further confusion within the Char's ranks. Chance, you will be on point for this mission. We will be counting on your blade to see us through when we catch up with Blaze Claw. I already have the perfect plan. Find the Char and then stab him. Alright, yeah, very nice plan there, Redding. <laughs> Chance, Redding, uh, th these guys are all quite interesting. I'll talk more about them as we go through. Chance, the gods favour some with brains. Oh god, it's going quite quick. Uh, where was that? So, some with that brains and some with brawn. You are not one of those so blessed. Planning will be handled by the tactical officer, Jen Va Valefield. Undoubtedly, this will be no simple pursuit. The child will have traps waiting for us. Another reason to have Jen in the company. She's, <laughs> di she's disarmingly adept at disabling traps. Jen says, that's still funny, sir. Lastly, on rear guard, we have Brent Poltroon. He is here because I have no other men at my disposal. How many times do I got to tell you it's brave, Brent Poltroon? My God, these guys' names are so hard to say. I mean, ready to guard your rear, sir. Yes. Well, be that as it may, please try not to abandon our unit and run away this time. The rear guard is the most dangerous task. They always take out the guy in the back first. You said that's why they put me there. I said no such thing. Everyone make yourselves ready. This will be our last chance to gather what supplies we can before setting off in pursuit. Move out. Okay, so yes, I butchered a lot of those jokes there. Um, but remember these guys. Remember this, because uh, basically uh, something will happen to them. I won't spoil anything later. And we actually get some quests once we've completed more of the primary quests to see what's going on with them. So that's pretty cool. I think some of those characters there are actually people we may have met way back in Ascalon as well. If they are, you can be sure I'll check and I'll talk about who they are and where we met them before. But yeah, there you go. It's quite interesting that, isn't it? That you need to have the title active for that little... Uh, cutscene to actually happen. Um, there is, an no, we'll do that next video. Uh, there are still the matters of these books, these story books. Don't, don't worry, I have not forgotten about the story books. And we will be filling them in and reading from them, uh, but maybe we'll do that next episode. Because, but for now, we, we can go straight back into the, the next mission, I've decided. Um, this is the Doom Lord Shrine. There's a few things that I can show you here before we continue on. Um, first is the henchmen. They've got new stuff to say, which is pretty cool. So <laughs> here they're actually banded off sort of profession-wise. So you get the two warriors together, you get the two healers together. You get the two kind of miscellaneous classes from prophecies, I like to say. The Mesmer and the Necromancer um, together. And then you also get the two elementalists over here. Um, uh, I think the most interesting people are, are obviously Talon, Talon Silverwing. Humans believe they are the only intelligent race. They are wrong. I wish I could teach them to open their eyes. But as the saying goes, there are those who can awaken and those who are doomed to sleep. I wonder if that's a very vague, very off kind of focus reference to the Elder Dragons there maybe? I don't know. Um, speaking of the... the, and I, I don't intend to do this a lot with, as the Let's Play goes on, but speaking of the, the Tengu, some of these quotes that have been coming from the Arena Net Twitter, I think at least one of them has now been coming from Saw Ornaclaw. Do you remember him? Or was that a her? I can't quite remember. Remember. I think that was the, the Tengo in the Roost way back in Cantha, so stuff's going on there as well. Uh, and it's basically Saul's talking to someone and saying, we don't have to fight, Look, don't do not do this, basically. Which is pretty cool, so yeah. Um, I might keep you guys up to date with that, if it stays kind of interesting, but I would like it, obviously, uh, to, to try and keep as, uh, as close to Eye of the North as possible. Anyway, the Char are our greatest enemies, and possibly, against these destroyers, our strongest allies. But I will not forgive them for what they have done to our homeland. They will pay. I like this from Devonna because... 
Essentially, Gwen has stolen Devonna's spotlight here in Eye of the North. Devonna is the main, was before Eye of the North, really, the main female lead. You know, she was the leader of the main party that's been going around in law in all of the campaigns. She's like the main character, really, Devonna, this person right here. And she was there at um, the searing, and she lost a lot as well, but. She kind of has to take a back seat because they made Gwen this bigger character and now Gwen kind of has all of the angst and shit about it. So uh, yeah, this is really all you get from Devonna on it and it, it's 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 quite nice because it's not over the top if you ask me. So, so yeah, Devonna's still good in, uh, big in my book. Uh, we'll speak to one more person. Uh, who should we stay? They're not, they're not that interesting, I guess. Menlo, just because he was so big in factions. I never thought thought I'd face the char again. Some things do not end until every enemy lies cold on the battlefield and the land is washed clean. All right, okay. So um, yeah, basically, we we'll probably speak to these guys a little bit more later. But for now, I kind of want to crack on with the mission. So let's just. I can't quite remember who I'd added before. Because I was quite happy with how good the team was doing when we broke in here. Because like some people actually did leave comments as well. That is quite supposed to be usually quite hard to get into Doom Law, isn't it? But it's so easy this time. I'm, I have no idea why. It's not like I've got a particularly amazing setup here. I've only got one hero. Um, but yeah. There are a few other people we can speak to. Of course, these are all uh, Pyre's Warband here. So they're all their second name all starts with Fierce, which is pretty cool. So you've got Bon War, Fierce Blade. He says enough standing, time for action. And uh, you've got G June Tear Drinker, actually. This isn't um, one of his warband. This is actually an Ash Legion char, I think. Uh, but basically, this guy uh, we can play against. Po we can play Polymock with. I will be doing that. Don't worry. Out. My uh, initial plan was to every time we met someone, I'd just play. But right now, we can't because Peter Redhill, obviously, this character's not progressed into the Tarnished Coast. So again, that'll be a later episode. And we get one kind of cool collector here. This guy, Fierce Justice. Who Swift Fierce Justice is one of Pyre's warband, but this is the only. You, you only ever speak to him as a collector here. <laughs> you never see him like in the missions or anything. But he talks a little bit about why he doesn't like the shamans. He says the shamans have filled char heads with nonsense for too long. Even our artwork is dedicated to false gods. If we are to live free of these so-called prophets, all traces of our past devotions must be eradicated. Hunt down those still faithful to the false gods and bring me any superb char carvings you find on the body, so I may destroy them for once and for all. Uh, and so this is one collector for the superb char carvings. Um, I think it's 250 if you can get 250 of the buggers which does take a long time you can get this mask from Vale, which I'll show you later on. Um, a lot of the th the unique armor and stuff like that takes a hell of a lot of items to be able to do it. Uh, and ArenaNet basically justified it by saying, "Hey, yeah, we know it's a little bit grindy, but you don't have to grind on them. You can just if you just keep playing the game on and off for years until Guild Wars 2 comes out, eventually you'll have enough." And you know what? It actually turned out to be true. I superb car char carvings was one of those items. I heard that quote from ArenaNet. I was like, "Okay, fine. I will never farm superb char." -carvings. Carvings. I will just keep the ones I get dropped in regular play and put them in my chest and I wanted to see how long it would take me before I could get the mask and it did it took me about two years I think which you know if you want to mask immediately then fine that's that's not for you but it, it could be done so you know I kind of agree with what they were saying there Anyway, let's speak to Gron. <laughs> I really do need to get a bit of a you move on here. Uh, I enjoyed watching you toy with your prey, Mouse. Unlike other humans, you are more than just a walking, smiling meal. I'm almost impressed by the ruthless way you handled my destroyer-worshipping kindred. Almost. Okay, so Gron says, Pyre led us since we were newly waned cubs. Weaned cubs. I would kill for him. Let us hope for your sake, meat, that you, that you do not fall from Pyre's favour. Right, cool. Okay, so um, he's got a couple of quests for us. He's also the merchant here. Uh, we could probably sell some stuff, couldn't we? Oh, I'll get Charlie out as well. I do want to remember to use Charlie a bit more. Last episode, I got him out and then I completely forgot again. We've still got the crown from the tournament. That's hilarious. Okay, hold on. Uh, we'll keep those. Let's just sell <coughs> all of this stuff, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to keep the superb char carvings. We'll see how many we have at the end. Um, and if I do end up actually trading them all to get the mask, if I can just buy some, for example, then I will do that. But we'll see how many we get just from regular play. Um, so, yeah, what do we actually want to do? One of these is a dungeon and veiled threat, eh? Oh, and that's another dungeon. That's an elite dungeon. Okay, so you what we're going to do is click Warband of Brothers, and this will take us into the mission. Are you ready to rescue the comrades? Yes, let's bring the Warband. Let's do it. Alright, so this is another mission that takes place underground in the depths of Tyria. So it's not a dungeon, it's a mission, um, which means Rebel Yell, I think, will continue to work. And we're not going to be able to get like the Dwarven Blessings down here, but we'll see. Okay, so basically, 
Um, there's going to be a lot of char down here. As we read in the description for the Doom Lord Shrine, um, it actually mentioned what was under here, didn't it? An entrance at the shrine leads to a sprawling complex beneath known as the Cathedral of Flame. So this is the cathedral. Uh, I don't know whether this was necessarily built by the char or not. It's a bit weird like that, isn't it? Anyway, right, so dialogue, sorry. Um, so Pius says this is the cathedral, a power base for the shaman cast and their witless followers. The captive members of my warband should be inside. So yeah, just like he says, I, I, I think that the idea is that the Char just found it, the Char Shamans found it and just decided to come here and live in it. Because there is a follow-up dungeon that you can come back here and you learn that kind of they've dug too deep, shall we, the age-old story of that. Um, wow, look at all that mistrust damage. Oh, I love it. I do love it. Mistrust, man. That's basically what got me through the underworld. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that that is such an overpowered skill. Well, I, I don't want to say overpowered, it's just something really good to use, so... But yeah, basically, uh, we're back in kind of a, a typical mission here. I'm not sure how much stuff I'll be able to really talk about here. Hopefully we can get past before they'll aggro us. Can we get past? Should I just run and say screw it? Yeah, I'm going to run and say screw it. So yeah, um, <laughs> it could be uh, I might just speed stuff up and sort of do post commentary. My other worry here is this mission's you know, it's not really short. Like, if you think of the last mission I did, that took me... Um, uh, two whole episodes to do it basically and I've just been rambling on loads before we even got in here so we'll see what happens fucking hell they're still chasing us go away it's not like I'm in hard mode is everybody alive you're all good yeah sweet okay so uh, so yeah I might speed it up and do a bit of post commentary so that we can get it all into one episode or maybe not I'm not sure anyway we've got this big hall here this always reminds me of the big hall you go to when you first come to Eye of the North you know when we're running through and everything's going crazy and we're being chased by the destroyers it always reminds me of that but um but yeah, and you get like these big bits of concept art here. This is something that ArenaNet started doing a lot more in Guild Wars 2. Something really cool. I might have mentioned it in the, in the Let's Play already. But um, basically, as we all know, they've got really good concept artists, basically. And, you know, the art that goes into the game is really good. Uh, in Guild Wars 1, you only got to see that concept art really, very rarely on like things on the walls like here. Which is very rare, really. Um, or the loading screens. And that was all you ever saw it on. But in Guild Wars 2, they've actually sort of decorated giant... Like the Vigil Keep, they decorated them all with beautiful paintings and Tread stuff which are the concept meat. art in fact the the concept art that you see here in the char homelands on those loading screens is actually a painting in the visual keep in guild wars 2 so it's like it, looking at it from a law perspective it's quite weird it's like kind of saying oh right so this is a a real painter in the guild wars universe painted this and blah 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 blah, blah which is pretty cool if you ask me anyway so what you do here is you you chase um the uh, <laughs> the char through here and they'll try and run away um, if you're quick enough or you know what you're doing you'll probably be able to kill them before they run too far but you want to kill the prison guard ideally as soon as possible because he's going to drop a prison key which you can then use to on this lock over here to spring the first member of the uh, the, the war band which is pretty great so you hear this lock I also love these little tables. These remind me of dwarves so, so much. These are obviously not char tables, actually, thinking about it. There's no way a char could fit on one of these pissy little things. I could barely fit on that. So, uh, yeah, who built this? Maybe this was an Asura place. That's, that's a pretty cool idea, isn't it? Maybe this was an Asura place? With some turkey still on the table, for whatever reason. Very off turkey, but yeah. Alright, so yeah, we'll open this. Uh, this bit's quite cool. Those guys will run away, I think, unless I'm on the wrong mission. Yeah, they'll all run away, you see. Don't chase them, because they all run off while all of these seekers come forward. They're going to kill that assassin I just summoned pretty damn quickly. There you go. And then they'll all move in, you see. So if you chase them, you'll end up massively over aggro. And it's very cool the way they did that. I I, I, I got caught off guard, I, taken off guard by it the first time I played this. And, you know, I, I've done all good because, you know, you, ha you make a mistake like that, but they don't punish you ho horrifically for it and say, oh, no, you can't play anymore. Game over, you're being kicked out. They just resurrect you, which is nice. So they do these cool little things, but they're never really that thr uh, frustrating. Yeah, that's them dealt with, so we'll keep coming up. And uh, this is always a huge room uh, in both of these dungeons, if you will, both in this mission and when you come back as a dungeon. And you never really have anything to do in here. So I, I don't know why it's so big. Maybe it's just because they have to reuse the assets. But yeah, we're going to kill these guys, which should go very quickly because they're balled up so so nicely, so neatly. I think there was a boss with them, wasn't there? No, maybe not. Uh, and as soon as they're dead, there you go, another carving. They do drop quite often. Uh, as soon as they're dead, we can speak to Seer Fierce Rain. Who will join our party? Did you bring these human slaves to carry your pack pyre, or are they lunch? 
Slaves, you brutal animal, says Gwen. All you can do is bite the hand that rescues you. So it seems we fight together. Cowl and Rowan are held further below. Let's not waste any more time. Okay, so we get to keep going. Now, something quite interesting there. Gwen spoke. That's because she's in my party. If she's not in your party and you complete this mission, um, you end up getting a lot of very different diet. Well, not a lot, but, you know, there's about four occasions, I think, maybe only three, where Gwen will speak. And if she wasn't in the party, Pyre would instead, instead speak. And, um... This is completely not because I don't really like Gwen that much, but I actually think that a lot of her dialogue really sucks in comparison to Pyre's. Because at least, uh, I know on at least one occasion when Pyre says something, so so there where Gwen just spoke, Pyre would have instead said something. Um, Pyre kind of talks about the, the gods, the titans, and how the rest of the Char are being morons that they believe in the titans and stuff. Which is obviously, there's a lot more depth and intrigue to that with, you know, a Char speaking about his the rest of the Char's beliefs and stuff, which we don't see very much of. But in Instead, all, you, all we're going to get through this is Gwen basically saying, oh, I hate the char, I hate the char. So, so yeah, have fun with that. But I, I did think, you know, I'm, I'm keeping the heroes with me even still. It's not a massive deal. I've told you that, that Pyre says that now. So, well, really, we're not missing out on anything. Anyway, so now we're going to come down here. I don't think this gate was open before we uh, rescued... What was his name again? Seer. Seer Fierce Rain. Uh, so we'll keep going. And this is quite a cool mission, actually. You just keep going deeper and deeper down and getting a bigger and bigger party. Um, and you might not really think about these guys building up, but slowly the warband will build up and they do help you a hell of a lot. At the end, you have to fight this awesome boss, which, of course, we'll see soon enough. Um... And it's just a brilliant fight because you've got all of these other char with you sort of fighting along. I've always sort of had a bit of an image of that fight in my mind. Oh, there's another hunter beast. I think they have to summon the beasts in, which is really interesting. But yeah, um, yeah, I've always kind of had this image of that fight. And it, it's always seemed pretty awesome to me. Just like a bunch of humans and a char warband fighting off against... Uh, well, we'll see what we're going to be fighting. It's very cool the thing we're fighting though. I'll tell you that much. And it's concerning some, some things that we saw a lot of. In fact, I think the first one we ever saw was in Rin. Um, and we've never fought them before, but we've seen them. And we know that they're a big part of at least the uh, Flame Legion's culture. Uh, but we, we've never really understood that much about them. Oh, in fact, we have fought them before in one of the bonus mission packs. But yeah. Oh, well. Hopefully you guys have, you guys have forgotten what that is. Anyway, let's go into level two. Of the War Band of Brothers. War Band of Brothers as well. That's the name of the mission, obviously. Um, our party has zero keys. Also, uh, th but the, the name of that, I think, is quite clearly a reference to um, Band of Brothers. Uh, what was that? A HBO series? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with... Uh, American TV networks, but yeah. Okay, so Pyre says, Judging by these tracks, one of my warband is being held to the south. Head that way, human, quietly. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to be quiet in this game. There's no such thing as south, but yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, um, I just read uh, that quote there by Talon, and by whatever miracle that my brain just worked. It uh, reminded me, in the last episode, you know when I told you guys to keep an eye out for Vale's thing? Some people left comments about some stuff that they saw Vale saying, and um, I, I figure a few of you may have missed some of it, but one of the most interesting things that I did want to mention, but completely forgot about, but it, he, he was quoted as saying that earlier, is um, Vale was the guy, when Prince Rurik died, he was the guy that went back to Ascalon to tell Edelburn that his only son was dead. And uh, if you guys have read The Ghost of Ascalon, you know that that's quite a big deal because basically that causes Edelburn to go insane. And um, the next big sort of dangerous thing that happens in the world, in Ascalon in particular, the Faux Fire, uh, is a direct result, essentially, essentially, of that happening, which is uh, really cool. So... Uh, yeah, Vale really is at the heart of a lot of different things. There's also something else. Vale, if if you think about it, his, his character archetype is kind of very similar. I've aggroed way too many things here. Very similar to... Um, I should have saved myself earlier. It, it's very similar to Nicholas the Traveller. Basically just a wandering traveller. Does, what does what he wants. You know, Nicholas is much more of a sort of an upfront, decent guy, if you ask me. You know, N Nicholas is really likeable. There's, there's not that much mystery to him. He's just like, he lays himself on a plate and he's says this is who I am you know I've got all these tales I'll tell you while well, Vale's kind of he's the same kind of character but he's more mysterious and interesting like that by the way you saw that prison guard that just died he died because the prison guards have got a skill right 
um, that gives them loads of health, like 3,000 health or something ridiculous, and it makes them attack faster, and it makes them do more damage, I think, right? But, but it's a stance, and in addition to that, they also have on this skill bar, for whatever reason, Frenzy, which is another stance that makes them attack faster, and they've got another stance, which I think is Flail, so they have three stances that all do the exact same thing and all cancel each other out, it's ridiculous. So the, the prison guards have got this amazing skill that obviously makes them kind of formidable opponents right but um, they activate it get all the health and then they'll activate frenzy or something a moment later and suddenly their health will just spike down and they'll die straight away so that's quite funny but yeah um, we'll, we'll do this and then I'll continue with my little rant about about Nicholas so we'll open this up 